Hey everyone, this is Daniel, um, and in this blog, uh, I'm showing how a workflow that could be built in SharePoint Designer can actually be rebuilt in Flow as well. Um, so let me take you to the example I have. Um, in the site over here, I have a parent list and a child list. And what happens in the parent list is um, users can come in and add new entries for the make and model that they want, or either a new user or an upgrade. Um, and, and what the Share, with SharePoint Designer, I could do a lookup um, and compare the model with um, the child list. And if there was an existing model already available, uh, I could go ahead and subtract the keyboard and mouse by one. Um, and that way I can keep a running tally on how many um, accessories I have left in the inventory. Um, that is something that could be done in SharePoint Designer. Um, and in this blog, I am going to redo that using Flow. Um, so let's take a closer look at these lists. Um, in the parent list, I pretty much have um, the out-of-the-box ID and title column, and I've also added two new columns, which is the make and the model, and these are single line of text. So as you can see, um, there's the make and the model, and they're single line of text. Um, the title by default was uh, required, so I just left it as it is, but you can make that as, you know, uncheck that. Um, the second list is the child list, and in the child list, again, uh, there's the title, which is the out of the box, uh, but I added the model, the keyboard, um, and the mouse. Um, so let's take a look at the list settings. Over here, um, the model is a single line of text, um, and then the keyboard and mouse is a number value. But there's one critical piece of information you need to know. The model has to be unique. In that list and therefore I'm using this enforce unique values radio button over here um, you want to keep all the models unique that's because there is a lookup that is happening from the parent to the child um, and, and because of that the items in the child have to be unique um, and so that's why it's very key that you have um, you know that uh, that unique value uh, radio button selected um, so this here is an overview of the SharePoint list. Um, and so now let's go ahead and look at how we're going to build the flow. So here I am now in my flow. Um, I will go in and start building. Okay, so let's go and create from blank. We'll call this as a uh, flow demo. Um, I will need SharePoint. And I'm going to use when a new item is created. Um, just make sure that I have the correct connection for SharePoint Online. Um, I usually go and check to see if any of my existing addresses are already here, uh, but they are not. So I'll put in a custom one. I already have a copy here. So I'll just paste that in. And now that I have my site, I should find all my lists, and I do. So the when a new item is created, I am going to use the first list, which is the parent list. So that's the first action over here. In the next one, I want to create um, the get items action or the steps. In the new step, I create add I uh, items. Again, it is a SharePoint action, and over here, I'm going to use the SharePoint get items. Um, same thing over here, the site will be the same, just make sure I've got the correct connection. Um, and let's see, does it have my site? It doesn't, so let me go ahead and make sure I put that back here. And here I will put in the child. So that is um, step number two. Um, now we're going to go ahead and add um, the next step. And over here I'm going to use in more apply add and apply to each that's the new action that i'm going to use and over here by default um, you only have these two value options but you want to make sure that you select the value from the get items um, that's key because make sure you don't select the uh, new items you want to select the value from get items so i put that over here now, and then inside this apply to each, I'm going to add a new action. Um, 
And over here, you can go ahead and simply search for Compose. And that's the one that I want, is the Data Operations Compose. So they're both the same. I'll select that. Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and now type in uh, a function. Um, but here's here's the key thing over here. Um, you have to make sure that you type in because even when I start typing in, I do get all these dynamic contents available. I do not want to use those. You make sure that you type everything in. Um, that's one thing. Second thing is um, for me, I am going to refer to a certain column um, in that child list and that column is the keyboard column because here is where I'm doing the math. The math is I want to subtract the existing value of keyboard by one. So, so that's the calculation or the function that I'm doing over here. But it is absolutely critical that you know uh, the original uh, value uh, or the original column name. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go back to my list. I'm going to go back to my child list. In the child list, I'm going back to the list settings. In the list settings, I am going to click on the column itself. And over here, up in the URL, scroll all the way to the back or all the way to the end, and you'll see that the field equals, and that is the value that you want. And you want to take the exact copy of that. And that's what I'm going to do. And copying that exact over here, copy it. I've even got a uh, notepad over here, something you guys can do as well. And I'm going to paste it. It is absolutely critical that you get the exact value which you have over here. Um, if the, in my case, the keyboard was uppercase K, so I'm just taking that uppercase. If it was lowercase, take it. I would have made that lowercase. Basically, take it as it is. Um, some of you guys may even have the percent twenty. Go ahead and take that as well uh, because that's what you need for that. Um, but anyway, in my case, I made sure that I got the exact value and I and I kept it over here. Uh, so now let's go back to flow um, because here is where we're going to add the subtract function. So let's let's type that in first in the notepad and then we'll we'll copy and paste that here. So th this is um, how the function is. And it's again absolutely critical that you follow the steps. So the first I'm going to put in this double quotes, then I put in the at, then I type in sub for subtract, open brackets, item open brackets, close brackets, question mark. Then you put the first uh, bracket, single quotes, and I'm going to type, literally copy everything I have from here, paste it over here, make sure there's no blank spaces whatsoever. Um, single quote, close bracket, uh, comma, and then the value I'm going to use to subtract with. In this case, it is one. So I'm that's all I'm doing is I'm subtracting by one, so I'm putting in one over here. Close brackets, and then the double quotes. So take a good look at this. I've added this also to the uh, uh, the blog, but it's critical that you exactly see what I'm doing. Is I'm typing in once again the column name, which is exactly the primary column name, and we found that column by going to the actual list. Now I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it over here just to make sure everything is good once again yep that's good again i did not use the dynamic content that's available over here i actually typed it in okay so let's continue the next step is now again in the apply to each i'm going to add a condition and here's another critical step um, what i'm basically trying to do is i'm trying to look up the same model from the parent list and compare that with all the models in the child list so in this condition, um, on the left side, I am getting the model from the when a new item is created. This is critical. You need to know where you're getting the, um, your dynamic content from. So again, on the left side of the condition, I am getting the, um, the model from the when a new item is created. So let's go 
and get my model. The middle, I'm going to keep it as it is, which is, is equal to. On the right, I am going to get my value from get items. So over here, I go in and I look at the model. And that's basically it. Now, it, it can be confusing if you just look at it right now, because looking at it, you don't know where did this come from the new item, did this come from the get items. You really can't see that when you look at it this way, which is why it's critical that when you're selecting it, um, you know, you make sure that you get the correct um, the value if it's from the new item or the get item. Um, that's why I wanted to make sure we walk through that. So now that the comparison is done um, in the um, uh, the condition, I'm saying yes. If 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 it, this matches the the models match, then that's a yes. And so my action is going to be to update an item in the child list. So again, I go back over here, I go to SharePoint. In the SharePoint, I select the update item. Scroll down a little bit. Update item. And the same thing over here. Um, I just make sure that I've got my correct connection. Um, I'll enter a value manually. Just get that link. Paste it. I am updating the child list. So let's do that. Um, and now the unique identifier. Again, the unique identifier, I'm getting it from the get items. So I select that as it is. Same thing for the title. That's also coming from get items. So I se select that option over here. Um, you can add the model. Um, it's not um, you know mandatory, but also I'll just go ahead and add that as well. Again, that's coming from the get items because that's where I want to update that. And then finally, for the keyboard, I want the calculated value. And so when I select that over here, I am going to use the compose uh, output because that's that's that is the variable that comes from this calculation that you've done so that's that's what I'm doing that's the compose and that's the output over here um, and then the final action is um, not mandatory but I'm going to do that for the sake of this example uh, is I'm going to just add a email alert that just helps me see what these values are so for that I will use my Office 365 Outlook, and I'll send an email. And in the send an email, I am putting in, let's see, the email goes to whoever created, um, yeah, created by email. Subject, I'll put in test, testing the flow demo. And in the body, I'll just put in some information. So let's say model. And the model I'm getting from the update item. And then I'm getting the keyboard. And in this case, the keyboard is the count of the keyboard. And for that, I get in the um, output. Once again, let's just confirm that for the model, I want it from the get items model. So let's just make sure I put in the correct one. And that is it. So here is a good way now to see that if everything you've put in is actually um, correct in design. And the best way to do that is basically click on create flow. Because if there's something which is not correct by design, um, you know, which flow doesn't like, uh, then this is where it'll tell you that. Um, and, and that's also a good way to confirm that what we typed in this, this function, or you know, even though we typed in everything manually, that this is exactly how flow wants it. Um, and so it didn't cause any error. So I'm going to now go ahead and click on done. And it gives you this new view of what the flow demo is, it shows the connections you have over here, who is the owner, and right now we haven't run run it yet, so that's why the flow history is uh, empty. But let's go ahead and now do some testing. So uh, me as a requester, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, I think I want an Aspire U. So that's what I'll do. I'm adding a new item. Uh, let's just say <coughs> um, testing 
for low demo make I'll put that in as a spire um, aces actually and the um, demo that I put in was the the model I'm putting in is a spire you I'm going to go ahead and save it and now there is the um, um, this I put in the new item um, the flow will kick off and if everything goes well um, it should go ahead and subtract this value from 100 to 99 so let's go back to flow um, go and take a look maybe we can just refresh that over here um, I see that the first flow just ran and it is succeeded. So let's take a look at it. Okay, I got an email over here, so that's good. Uh, but let's take a look to see um, the flow. Sometimes it gives the, the GUID ID for the list name. That's fine. We'll leave that as it is. Um, hey, it did the math. It actually went ahead. Remember, the original ID, uh, value was 100, but it subtracted that to 99, which is fantastic. Um, and now, because the condition matched, remember that model which we had, uh, one get, getting pulled on, uh, from the uh, parent list and the other one getting pulled from the child list, that matched, and it's a yes. So it came over here. It went ahead and updated, and it did the correct update because if you look at even the body over here, it is pulling the correct model because that's what we typed in the aspire and this is the model I mean this is the information that's coming in from the child list uh, the original value was one so it, it did that uh, and it subtracted that by um, I mean, the original value was 100 but it subtracted that uh, one and it gave me the 99 and then it sent me an email let's take a quick look at that email um, it says yep that's the model and that's now the current keyboard value and now if you go back to that list if I refresh it, this 100 should change to 99. And that's exactly what happened. Um, the flow took care of the subtraction. Um, and and it, it really replicated what can be done in SharePoint Designer as well. Um, I had uh, the constant that I had between the parent and the child is this model. Um, the models over here match. Um, so since I have something that does match, I could use that to um, relate the two lists and I could do the subtraction. So that's basically how you can replicate. Something that could be done on SharePoint Designer can also be done on Flow. And this is how you do it. Um, here's the video and I've also pr provided all the uh, screenshots and details um, in the, the Flow blog over there. And so I uh, hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope this guys hel this helps you in some of the future flows that you guys are building.